Ben Foggins, Media Corner, back again with another movie review. And welcome back to my series of Spider Man reviews. And to continue on with the rest of the reviews, I'm going to talk to you guys, to to you guys of course, the 2007 superhero sequel. And this is the third and final film of the Raimi trilogy, and that is, of course, Spider Man 3. So, Spider Man 3, this is the third and final film of the Raimi trilogy. And the story this time around, we see Peter Parker, aka Spider Man, is back once again, played by Tobey Maguire. And now, every and everything is now going the way it is for himself. He finally got the girl of his dreams, uh, Mary Jane, uh, who, who he's, now, he's now dating with Mary Jane, who's once again played by Kirsten Dunst. And pretty much all he wants to do is to propose to her, And but it but few things keep going in his way since his main job is, of course, being Spider-Man. And also the friendship between him and Harry is kind of broken into pieces now. It's like, it's like over right now. It's like it's torn apart and it's all gone because Harry, you know, if in the end of Spider-Man 2, you know, he discovered who Peter... Who, what Peter, who P Peter is really is, and also Harry finds out about his father's secret and legacy is that he was the Green Goblin, and he decides to use those those gifts to basically take his revenge on Peter, and he does attack and he uses that gift where he attacks Peter, and then unfortunately, and then however Harry ends up getting into an accident, where he then loses his memory and he just doesn't remember anything at all. And then meanwhile, this escaped convict named Flint Marker, played by Thomas St. Jude, he's escaped from prison after he was convicted for the murder of Uncle Ben. And we try to, and we audiences are trying to think, was he really the killer or was it someone else? And so while he's on the run, he ends up catching, he ends up getting caught in this experiment full of sand, where he later becomes this villain known as Sandman. And then he starts to cause a bit of mayhem and destruction in the city while the police are after him since he's on the run from prison. And... Um, meanwhile, this alien symbiote crash lands on Earth where it catches the eye of Peter and then Peter then catches the symbiote and then it starts to attach, to on, attach onto him and it starts affecting his Spider-Man Spider suit and he becomes this alternate version of Spider-Man known as Black Suit Spider-Man which makes him more powerful and stronger than ever and he decides to use the suit to make him more powerful than ever even going up against Sandman since he has a serious grudge against Sandman when Peter found out who he really is. And then later on, it starts to affect Peter's beha behavior, and it cut, it comes way too much for him. And then he, he and then it's like affecting everyone around him. Like everyone's scared of him, like his girlfriend, uh, his aunt's scared, and his friend as well. And what happens is uh, he he gets rid of the suits, and then he catches the eye of this um, photographer named Eddie Brock, played by Topher Grace, where he catches the symbiote. And then he becomes this version known as he becomes this villain known as Venom, and he starts to team up. And then he finds Sandman, and then he teams up with him, where they both work together to cause a bit of cause a massive, uh, massive mayhem and horror to the city. And so Peter has to do whatever he can to be to base. And so Peter, as Spider Man, has to do whatever he can to basically stop Venom and Sandman from destroying the city. And have to and has and he has to protect everyone he knows, especially his love, uh, the love of his life. And so Peter has to do this, has to try and save the city one more time. So that's pretty much the story of Spider Man Three. Now, with Spider Man Three, I remember this movie being absolutely everywhere back in two thousand seven. I remember seeing the trailers everywhere on YouTube back in two thousand seven. I remember as well the advertisements on TV. I remember all, even all the merchandises. I remember from Spider Man Three, like I remember the toys I used to collect from Spider Man from ha from Spider Man Three from Hasbro. I used to collect them like I had I had all the figures from the moon from the from the from this movie you know I had like Spider-Man, Black Spider-Man, Venom, Sandman, New Goblin and all that I had all those I even remember getting like the Burger King toys as well which that was awesome <laughs> and I also remember playing the video game as well which I do I did play the video game at first for the Xbox and I played it for the PlayStation 3 and I still have the game to this day and I know that it's not the best Spider-Man game, but I did kind of think it's kind of a bit of a fun game, even though it's not great at all. It's kind of like a mixed game. Well, it's kind of like a mixed game for people who, whatever they think of Spider-Man Three, the video game, though. So, and I didn't see this. In, I didn't see this movie in the cinemas back in two thousand seven, but I remember, you know, the premiere of it on TV and all that, and everywhere as well, and pretty much everywhere, I think, and pretty much everywhere on the internet about Spider-Man Three. And I remember getting my own copy of the film. Uh, uh, at my local sh at my local store in where I live, and um, <clears throat> I even got myself the the Blu-ray of this film when I got the whole trilogy on Blu-ray of um, Spider-Man, which is right over there in my in one of my shelves up there. 
And so, um, and I've rewatched the film, and I've heard, and since rewatching, I've heard some review, mixture of reviews of what people really think of Spider Man 3. Like, from what I've heard, people, some people enjoyed Spider Man 3, but say there's not the best Spider Man. Some even thought Spider Man 3 was alright, and few just did not really like Spider Man 3. But in my opinion, Spider Man 3, it's good a bit, but. There are a lot of issues with this film, and this unfortunately is not my favorite Spider-Man film. This is not like my absolutely the absolute worst Spider-Man film. I'd say this is my uh, I put on my list of being right below on the list of being my least favorite. But there are a few things that I enjoy, but we'll get into those later. But we just want to get my issues out of the way first. The story for this third and final film wasn't the best storyline because there are too many plot holes and subplots in this film, like the love triangle drama between Peter, Mary Jane, and Harry. Uh, Harry losing his memory after he he tried to attack Peter and then all that kind of stuff as well happens to him in the in this movie that makes him change throughout the film and um uh, MJ and like Mary Jane in her play like she was she was like she was like the the Broadway musical she was doing but then she get on the review she gets and then she gets fired um Sandman about his home life before we do see him becoming Sandman and um, the alien symbiote that crash lands on Earth and we know see being Peter transformed into normal Spider-Man to black suit Spider-Man and then having another love triangle love triangle drama where a new character is introduced in this movie which is Gwen Stacy who's played by Bryce Dallas Howard and having Eddie in this movie where we see him just a being photographer and he starts to basically annoy Peter like getting on Peter's nerves and then Finding out who, and then finding out who he really is, and then of course, you know, we see him becoming Venom, and um, and then finding out who um Sandman really is, who since he had, since Peter has a serious grudge on him, and all that. The plot, the the story in this movie is just a pretty, is pretty much a mess, really. There are some, and there was just well, there were some aspects of his story I did thought were not too bad, but the rest of the story, but some plot holes in the story. I felt too much and it was too it was there was too much too much into its story really of like what was really going on. I can't really can't really blame Sam Raimi for it because for since since rewatching it and hearing what people think about it and they suit some do some people do kind of blame Sam Raimi, but I wouldn't really blame him. I would blame the studio because the studio got their hands way too involved with Spider Man three since fans, you know, wanted to continue on to be, you know, ma massively excited for Spider Man three. Like what people were like back in back like what the fans were like in two thousand four with Spider Man two, but unfortunately, they got it was way it was it got way too out of hand, and then unfortunately we end up getting this. Just overall the story, like I said, just wasn't the best in 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 the, in the series. But for the acting, for the most part, Tommy Maguire he still is really likable as Spider Man and Peter Parker. Although there was some character development for his character Peter Parker, I found it a bit bit not good at all. Like him, when we see him trying to support MJ after she gets pretty bad reviews from her music, from her, from, her, from the Broadway musical she was doing, and um, stuff like that as well. And when we do see him, you know, being like emo Peter Parker when he does get the black suit, um, there were some, some cringe moments with him with what he does really, um, like um, what he's saying and especially the dance scene which. I I have no other words to say what 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 other people have said about um the dance sequences in Spider Man three. Because if you, if you I don't want to say it, but if you want to know what people said about, it, you can check out. You can just type on YouTube and you just can search up any kind of reviews that that seems interesting to you about Spider Man three. And um, for the cast in the film, you got Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane. She still is really good, like she was in the first two movies. James Franco as Harry. He wasn't bad in the film. I thought he did a good performance, but for what he was given, I just found it pretty uninteresting and and all that, and just not good. But um, and also for and you got Rosemary Harris as Aunt May. She still is really good, like she was in the first two movies. And J.K. Simmons as J. Jordan Jameson is still really entertaining, like he was in the first two movies. And for the new additional cast in the film, you got Thomas Hanchurch as Sandman. He was pretty good in the movie, although. Although he's not like the he's not like my mo my most favorite Spider-Man villain that I've ever seen for a live action Spider-Man film, but he was still not too bad in the film. Topher Grace is Venom. Uh, 
Well, Topher Grace, at first, he did seem fine. He was kind of fine for the... He, he was fine when we were introduced to him, but for what else he was doing in the film, I found him really miscast in this film. Topher Grace, I found him really miscast in the film as um, as Eddie Brock. And then for him as Venom, when we do see Venom, we don't see Venom in the, la in the last act of the film. And they didn't have, like, much screen time, which... I heard that Sam Raimi didn't really want, didn't really want, originally did not want him in this movie. But the studio like kept forcing him to like, we want Venom, we want Venom, we want Venom, and then he was like, fine. But the the, the design of Venom, I found it pretty rushed, and he's not like my favorite incarnation of Venom we've had for a Spider for a Spider Man for anything involving Spider Man from like either for television or movies. But the effects for Venom they were not too bad, but. It's just like it just felt just kind of rushed, really, for him to be in this movie, and I just felt like he was just on. He was. I think he was just not. I think he was unnecessary to be in this movie, really. For other cast in the film, you got Bryce Dallas Howard as Gwen Stacy. She wasn't too bad in the film, and she was pretty. She wasn't too bad. I thought she was good enough in the film, and everyone else, I thought they all gave pretty solid performances enough. But the direction by Raimi himself, I thought the direction for the most part was not too bad. Like there was some good moments I liked. Um, um, like some action sequences that I thought were pretty enjoyable enough. Like, uh, like the the subway fight scene between Black Suit Spider Man and Sandman, which I quite enjoyed. Which I enjoyed that scene. Uh, the scene where Harry is taking his revenge on Peter, which I liked that the first time. And then uh, the second time when we do see Peter against Harry, which is a bad knuckle fight, I quite enjoyed those scenes. But for the first scene of when we do see Harry against Peter in the, in the movie. There were some there were some effects moments that you can just tell there was that you could just tell like yeah that's a CGI or anything or green screen, like um, there are some dig fully rendered digital human faces in this movie, like in that scene as well as some moments in the finale scene, and the green screen is really recognizable as well, from the scene where Harry's attacking Peter. And um, while the effects are not awful, there were some good effects moments, but the rest of it, you can just say, you can just tell it was like, yeah, you can tell it's CGI or a green screen or anything like that. Uh, but other act, but other scenes I liked in this film, um, uh, Spider Man against Sam went and, and Sandman in the in the bank truck, I kind of enjoyed that scene. And um, other scenes I liked um, was the birth of Sandman. I quite enjoyed that. And Bruce Campbell's third cameo in this movie, which I quite enjoyed as well. I should have mentioned in the other two movies that Bruce Campbell appears in all three movies. I liked when he, whenever I, I like all three cameos. The first film he did the cameos in the wrestling scene. The second cameo was where he plays the bouncer at the door, and then this one he plays the, he, he owns a French restaurant. I quite enjoy Bruce Cam whenever ever since I rewatched them. I, I always enjoy Bruce Cam I, whenever Bruce Campbell's on screen. When I saw whenever that scene pops up, I'm just I always smile, <laughs> and just it's just entertaining. It's just pretty funny as well. And I also kind of enjoy the finale as well, although for what. Whenever Venom was on screen, like when we do see Topher Grace not wearing like the Venom mask or anything, I just didn't really like it. Because again, I just think for some lines he was delivering in the film, I found them not really that good and a bit, and a bit cringe. But I did like there, I did like some moments of the finale, but there were some moments of the finale I just did not really like, mostly due to Topher Grace's Venom, really. And the score, the music score in this film is this one is not this time composed by Danny Elfman, who did the first two movies. This one is made by is done by Christopher Young, which I thought the music he did in this movie was not not too bad actually. I quite enjoyed this this the music score, although I mostly prefer Danny Elfman's score in the first two movies though, because they're in my childhood those ones. But I did, but I did like the score in this one though overall though. But it's not my favorite score for a Spider-Man film I've seen. But. In the end, though, Spider-Man 3, yeah, unfortunately, this is not my favorite Spider-Man film. It's not the absolute worst superhero film, I'd say, I put on my list of being, like, this is not, like, my number one worst superhero film of all time. I've seen far worse superhero films on this planet, but um, there were some aspects I did like in this film. Like, some performances, while well, there were some other performances I thought weren't that good, um, some good action sequences, I thought were enjoyable enough. Some effects were not too bad, while some were really recognizable. The story was just kind of scattered all over the place, really, and there was too many villains in this one, and there were some scenes that thought were a bit unnecessary in this film. Again, I can't really blame Sam Raimi for what he, was, what he, had, what he had to do in the film. 
you, ha you kind of have to blame for the studio because the studio got their hands way too much, got their hands way too involved with this project of like what they wanted to be instead of Sam Raimi's original like vision for what he wanted to do with Spider-Man Three. So please, those fans. Well, if you if you want to continue on with the original trilogy, you may you might want to you may you might either enjoy this or you might not like this one. It may be a cup of tea or maybe not be a cup of tea. I don't know, but that's pretty much all I have to say about Spider-Man Three overall. Other than it's just it's sort of a decent movie, although it's it's just not the best Spider-Man film by far. It's I wouldn't say that, again. It, it's not the absolute worst I've ever seen. It's not my least favorite, but it's just not my favorite one. So I'm gonna give Spider-Man Three three out of five stars. Again, I don't hate this movie like some some fans did. Some fans either like this or hate this or they just are in the middle of this but I do think it's a decent movie like I said there were some moments I did like but the rest of it was just a bit of a mess really and again I can't blame Ra Sam Raimi for all this you again you just kind of have to blame the studio for what they what they did back in because I read the backstory for this film and I did find it in fascinating on what happened with this film and again I just can't blame bl blame Sam Raimi for this film I just kind of have to blame the studio for what they what they did with this but Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching for my review of Spider-Man 3. Let me know what you think of Spider-Man 3. If you have seen this already, did you either like this or did you really were you very let down with this one? And that's that's the tri that's the Raimi trilogy done. The next ser the next one I'll be doing I'll be the Mark Webb series, which is there's just only two films really. So I'll be reviewing those two movies. Um, and and stay tuned for my review of the Amazing Spider-Man and some other reviews I'm planning to do. And as always, this has been Falling's Media Corner signing off.